Naomi, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you too. Yeah. She came on a motorbike. <laughs> I am so impressed. It's such a beautiful day out there. I'm just uh, sad that I wasn't at the bottom of the stairs just to see the sight. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can watch us ride off. Yeah, Into maybe. the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope we're not here that long. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> She's there with the leathers. Hubby's there with the leathers. And young Son's Ethan too, I think. Yeah, with the leathers. That's very cool. Very cool. It's a family mm. thing. You're so much cooler than what we are. I love the colours of the bike too. <laughs> yeah, they're very pretty. Mm. Mm, very polished. They yes. spend a lot of time cleaning yes. those bikes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Pride and joy. A lot of time, yeah. 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 That's what it is. They were beautiful. Yeah. Very cool. Well, it's really nice having you here because we're continu- continuing this series where we're talking about how we're wired, how we're gifted, what we might be passionate to try and change and do. And I'm just going to read out our, um, the verse that's inspired it all, I suppose. So it's from Corinthians. It says this. It says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. And now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Do you want to expand upon this? Oh, I, just, I just love the way God's wired us to do common good regardless of the season. So often um, we can feel like circumstances inhibit, mm. but nothing can actually inhibit what's inside of us, what God's placed inside of us to love and to do good. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we can always think outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you, how would you say God's wired you? What are some of the gifts? gift mixes that he's given you that make you you? (laughs) Um, I guess for me, I really like spending time with people. Mm. So I really create space in my timetable to spend with people. Yeah. Um, You know, doing coffee and lunch and dinner and all those sorts of things. Um, And I used to always joke that having coffee with people was my ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, yeah, carving out that time in your busy timetable, I think, um, yeah, just sharing conversations and just inviting people to the table um, yeah. would definitely be one of the ways I'm wired. Mm. Um, something else that I guess I wanted to share was um, how I like um, – I make sure that I listen to God throughout the day. So, um, you know, I'll be going about my day doing my chores or (laughs) domestic whatever, Um, (laughs) and God will just put someone's name into my mind um, and I'll usually just stop what I'm doing and quickly send them a message and just say, hey, thinking of you, you Mm. know, Mm. hope you're doing okay. Um, And I've just had so many stories of people saying to me that they they sort of go how did you know that I was going through something mm. like yeah. it's like you knew that I was struggling at that particular time or um yeah and there was one um, particular person who I hadn't seen in quite a while and um her name popped into my head and I thought it's a bit strange like mm. I haven't mm. heard from her in a long time and mm. um, we sort of grew up together you know and then drifted apart and I thought I'll just quickly, you know, send the message, whatever. And probably about, I don't know, a week later, she messaged me back and said that um, that particular day she was actually contemplating taking her own life. Wow. Wow. And, you know, me sending that message, she kind of went, someone does care. Yeah. So, yeah, I take it quite serious when God sort of puts a name into my mind. So you hold space for people. So it's not just about meeting and chatting. It's about holding a space. Yeah for meaningful conversation so they can be superficial if they want to be superficial but if they want to go deep yeah and for you is there a part of that where you find yourself just sometimes being a witness to whatever they're going through because sometimes I feel like that's sometimes one of the few gifts we can give is just to hold a space and Mm. bear be bear witness yeah like a shoulder to cry on sort of thing yeah or just to give um credence to the to the narrative of what they're actually sharing you know to to be a witness to the story that they're telling um jesus did that so beautifully with people who were marginalized or people who didn't have a voice like the poor uh, women. Yeah. He heard their story, he held the story, the space open and was interested in what they 
had to say. Yeah. Is that that that's the kind of space? So it's, yeah. It's not this just this girly uh, chit chatter kind of thing. If they want to do that, they can yeah, do that because I know sure. you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think I've I've been very intentional about yeah. making sure I have that space. Um, kind of when I I guess look at my weeks I plan um, for space if that makes sense Um, and yeah just I guess pray that God will give me someone to reach out to wow that's so beautiful I love it what an amazing superpower yeah yeah I love that (laughs) idea of I'm intentionally because I am so not intentional I don't use the diary or anything like that <laughs> we know i know um, <laughs> i'd be lost without mine yeah, yeah yeah she yeah. is <laughs> um i'm much more spontaneous than that but i love that idea yeah mm. it's very cool isn't it is that why you um because you're quite passionate like you're heavily involved with the women like you run the shine program like your your work as well is that why you sort of found yourself in those spaces do you think um, partly because of that, but I think partly because of what I went through as a young person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for me, um, growing up and not really knowing who I was or not liking who I was when I found out who I was, if that makes sense, yep. um, spending a lot of years kind of hating myself um, mm-hmm. and having no self-esteem and you know, value and sense of worth and all those things and trying to change myself. Um, and I guess for me, I want to work with these young women to, um, I guess, let them know that they can be whoever um, they're meant to be mm. um, and they don't need to, I guess, try to change themselves to fit in mm. with society. Um, mm. Yeah. Because there's strong messaging, isn't there? Like I, I remember in my era, um, the, the girls were supposed to be sweet and nice and mm. kind and mm. that didn't always work well for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not me either. <laughs> uh, so that was a really hard thing because, you know, I had an opinion. You weren't supposed to be opinionated yeah. and all that kind of stuff and I had strong views on the way certain yeah. things and that wasn't always appreciated. Probably the delivery wasn't great at the age of 16 <laughs> either, but, you know. <laughs> um but today there's really, really, I think the messaging's even stronger around uh, looks, um, body shape, yep. body size. Yep. Um, I think girls are far more groomed towards um, having to, I don't know, present an image rather yep. than their real them. Yep. And I think in crowd, out crowd in some ways is stronger because unless you're in the pretty girl club, Mm, where do you fit? Where do you land? I yeah. just feel like it's stronger than ever with social media. Is that what you're yeah. finding? Absolutely. Um, and I think, like I said, you know, for me, um, growing up, there was a lot of things that I hated about myself and that um, body image and all of that was a big part of it um, to the point where I developed eating disorders and those sorts mm-hmm. of things. So um, I think for me, yeah, I just want to kind of get it early um, yeah. and change their, I guess, their trajectory really um and just yeah change their life it's so cool yeah mm. i've just realized i did a terrible job of explaining to all the viewers in the wider community some of your background do you want to share <laughs> um like, so, so like work. Your, your study your work i mentioned a shine program but most people probably don't know what a shine program is okay so the shine program is a self-esteem um, program that we run in riverside high school um for grade nine girls um i yeah i've done i guess um training in fitness um health nutrition that sort of thing Mm. um and at the moment i'm working in a homeless shelter Mm. so wow that kind of so cool yeah (laughs) where you were going with that no it paints a really good picture though of like where you've ended up and um as you're speaking about this sort of stuff like um Mm. I just think it brings a lot more authority as well to your voice because you you really are an expert. I, I don't use that lightly either, <laughs> but um, you found yourself in like this really powerful spot in community, I think, and it's really cool to see. Yeah. Mm. And you've studied hard. Mm, like, six years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What did you, what's the official title of your degree? Um, so I have a bachelor's degree in health science mm. and a master's degree in human nutrition. Yeah. 
Well done, you. Yeah, it's go like you. Being a mum as well. <laughs> yes. Mom and a wife. It's so cool. Yeah. 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 So, um, what are some of the struggles that you experience in trying to be who you are? How God's wired you, you know? What are some of the struggles in, in releasing that passion that's on the inside of you? Um, I think for me for a long time it's been about um, how people will judge me yeah. and perceive me. And it's like what you were saying before, you know, being opinionated and loud and crazy and full on and in your face. And I guess I always thought, yeah, women or girls, ladies are not supposed to be like that. Um, I always wanted to be that dainty, quiet little wallflower, <laughs> but it never really worked out for me. Um, so I suppose the challenges are really just being, yeah, who you are and being true to that. Um, and not caring mm. about what other people think. Mm. Yeah. Have you got any tips to help people get to the? Because learning to love yourself is um, really hard. It's really hard, <laughs> but it's really important because it's really hard to love others yeah. until you love yourself. Yeah. Um, um, tips. Mm. I guess it's, it's really letting go of what other people think. Mm. Like their perception of you is their problem. <laughs> um, mm. I think... Adam always used to have a saying and it was like um, what other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. So it's kind of like, yeah, you have to just go, well, God's made me this way and mm. I'm just going to live in who I'm supposed to be. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, I don't have any, you know, I think that letting, step. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that letting go one's a really big one because we're um, a culture driven by celebrity and um, – Oh, status. I mean, Instagram in some ways is quite boring because all the photos are all the same. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody has anything different up there or anything that at times, you know, you sort of scroll through and it's all mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, everybody living this amazing life. It's probably why I don't post very much because I can't think of anything amazing to put on there, <laughs> let alone take the snap. But I suppose just letting go of all that and being content in your own skin, but also being content to go, okay, God, it's just you and me doing this today. Yep. How are we going to do it? Yeah. Mm. I think that's really, really cool. So I guess I've known you for, I don't know, how long would it be? Six, seven years now? Eight. eight it years. was just eight years the other week. Do you like mark it out in the calendar and just sort of like? Kind of, yeah. Gosh, <laughs> we're so not alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And um, I watched you go into university. I watched you go through that whole process of, you know, oh, I think I might want to go down this line and, and then doing the whole study thing. And so I kind of see you coming out of that as this uh, woman with, um, who's, who's really focused in on getting the knowledge and those sort of skills. And it's kind of like you're on this, I see you kind of like on this brink of ready to just wanting to unleash everything that you've learned, both through your family life, through being a, a, a woman in this century, as well as a, a girl who's studied a lot. What would, what would be your dream? Like what would, if you could if, ask God for anything, what would, what would be your dream in terms of? Loving people, um, like is there something in there? Yeah, I've had this dream for, honestly, it's been like 15 years. Yeah. Um, so it kind of feels like it's almost ready to just, you yeah. know, because it's been kind of burning away for so long. Um, and for me it is that I guess I want, I want a space, I want a home um, for girls mm -hmm. um, and I want a space for them to come in and to be loved, mm. um, to be healed, to feel whole, um, that whole well-being um, in every sense, mm. um, spiritually, physically, mm. um, mentally, all of those um, things. Um, That's so cool. So you've okay. worked really hard towards, um, I suppose, getting the credentials for mm. that, yeah. both in terms of developing your own inner being as well as the external study kind yeah. of thing. 
Um, what's it like to f- – because um, it feels like the, the dreams just oh, – you're just now at this real bubbly kind of – and it's like a champagne, you yeah. know, the cork in a champagne bottle where you just want to unleash it yeah. and just – is that is that how you're kind of feeling? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, like I said, I think because it's been so long and I'm not really very good at waiting – well, you are because you've waited 15 years. It's a lot better than what I would have done. <laughs> but, but I've had so many arguments with God along the way. Like, um, you know, I would say to him, oh, you've got the wrong girl. I can't do this. This is not for me. Um, this is a way out of my comfort zone. This is just beyond anything I can do. Um, and just arguments, you know, I say to God, why did you give me this dream? Like, mm-hmm. why didn't you just give me, I don't know, something like being a checkout chick for the rest of my life? Like, mm-hmm. why couldn't I just do that? <laughs> Yeah. Why do I have to do something that's so big? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think just owning it and going, well, yeah, he's given mm. me that dream and it's there and, yeah, I'm, I am. Mm. I'm ready for it to just mm. But I think fruition. that the, you are so wide for that dream too because, like, you're, you've got um, – you, you love to hold that space, which mm. means you like to go in deep and give time – like lots of time, yep. and when we're talking about um, girls who are broken and bruised, that's what they need, isn't yep. it? It's just this time, and now you have all this knowledge as well and this skill that you've acquired through your study. I can just kind of see how it's just a perfect fit for, for how you're actually wired. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it's that self-doubt yeah, that yeah. comes in. But yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So one of the best ways we could um, – support you in that is just by praying for the cork to be unleashed for the next step isn't it yeah absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. and that can often we can kind of often think of it like a uh, rehab home or something like that do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like we have one vision Mm. but then often what i've found with those sort of dreams it happens but it happens in a different way yeah kind of thing and all of a sudden you realize oh i'm in this home and i'm actually caring for these people and i'm actually creating these programs and and it just happens in, in different ways mm, sometimes, it's good. doesn't it? The how can mm. change, can't it? The how, the, yeah. Yeah, the method, yeah. yeah but but it, the gift mix is the same no matter where it's being yeah. utilised. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like what that verse it comes back to, like it's been given for the common good. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. a, um, there's a difference to be made which is, and you're, you're passionate about it. It's so cool. Yeah. Now, what I love about this though is because um, the way you've communicated it, like it looks, it's just so articulate and so clear i suppose for what we'd hope to sort of pull out with this series because so often i think that when we sort of discover like um the middle ground of like those overlapping um circles of like our skill mix our abilities our giftings alongside of like our passion and then alongside of our opportunity like that middle ground between all three of those is often where we find our sweet spot in life and where we can really the common good where we can really make an impact in the world and where we really find our peace and our place in the world and i think as you share it's just so (laughs) blatantly obvious like it's so cool don't you think yeah yeah you're ready for launch yeah Yeah. it's pretty cool yeah whereas some of the other stories that we've um looked at um today you know their their dreams have already launched some have had setbacks because of covid this year in the middle of their dreams so we've looked at you know how do you overcome that Whereas for you, you're right on the brink of you've done all this work, all this planning, all this thinking, and you're just you're just ready to launch. Mm. Yeah, um, which is, I think, even just where I am at now, like as in work wise. Yeah. Um, when I finished uni, I sort of thought, oh, God's got a job for me. It's all good. Like I didn't stress about it. Mm. Um, but I guess I thought it was going a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought I'd end up in nutrition somewhere, and um, that you know something would just miraculously open up um Mm. and then this job at the shelter came along and i kind of thought meh whatever i'll apply and see what happens um and yeah adam said to me like it's like it's in a girl's home hello (laughs) (laughs) god's trying to tell you something here you know like Mm. it's right where you want to be um so yeah it Mm. was quite a miracle really because i'm not trained to be there um i don't have the qualifications of social worker so, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Mm. But the crazy thing is, is that often without good nutrition and good sleep, you can't do anything else. Like so often they're the first two things that need um, help with. Mm. 
because they affect everything, don't they? Yep. Mm. They those Certainly two do. things, sleep and nutrition, affect our mind, body, and spirit. Yep. And sometimes all people need is either a good sleep or a good feed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <very true. laughs> that's true. And if they don't get either of those, it doesn't matter how many counselling sessions they turn up to. They're not going to take it in. Mm. They're not going to yep. remember it. They're not going to be able to enact it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so just those those basics, which we consider basics, are just vitally important, mm. aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yep. I also think that sometimes if we end up in a place that's too much of a clean fit, like it stunts our um, creative ability to, to create new things or to love in new ways because there's clearly gaps with our services. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. There's gaps with the homeless service and there's programs that have never been dreamt of before and that sort of thing. But when I think like what you've said, like, hey, you're not, you don't have the right qualification for that job role at the moment yeah. but because you've got a different background, a different passion and, and somewhat related qualification like you see it a little bit differently yeah i think that's where it's healthier it's when new things are, are born yep. do you know what i mean it's when new people are then reached and new, new ways of love are found and i think that's just so cool yeah mm. yeah it's very cool mm. yeah well unless although if you guys have anything else i think we might leave it there what do you think yeah do you reckon you should i reckon you should pray for her i reckon we both should pray for her <laughs> <laughs> i said it first <laughs> go for it yeah okay Heavenly Father, I just thank you for dreams. Thank you for the way in which you wire people and you lead people. I thank you for dreams that sit in the heart for a long time, that are held close, that aren't treated shabbily. And I thank you for the way in which um, Naomi has treasured the things that you've placed in her heart. And Father, I'm just so excited and I just really want to see um, what's inside of her just unleashed, uncorked, um, released, empowered because I just know that there's going to be so many um, lives changed and, um, yeah, just impacted in such a beautiful way. So we just pray that you make a way. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how it'll happen, but we just pray for mystery, I suppose, to become reality, for the things that are hidden to be made um, visible. And, uh, yeah, just guide. Naomi, we just thank you for her faithfulness to the dream thus far. Um, yeah, and we look forward to how this, this dream will be for the common good. In your precious name, amen. Amen. amen.